In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a contact form that is inside of a pop-up that pops up when you click a button. In this example, we have the click here to contact us. Don't mind that's over to the left. You'll probably be using a different page builder, a different theme, so yours will appear totally differently, but the process will be the same. And when you click on it, boom, there's our contact form in a pop-up. Super slick. In this tutorial, I'm showing you how to do that. And if you have any questions or comments throughout this video, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you like that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. Now let's get started. The first thing we have to do is go into our WordPress dashboard and install two plugins. So let's go to the dashboard. We're logged in as an admin. Let's go to plugins and add new. For the contact form, we're gonna use contact form seven. It's not the greatest, no frills, no gimmicks, no easy builder, but it's free and it works really well. And there's all kinds of add-ons that let you do more. In fact, I've got a whole playlist about contact form seven on this channel. If you wanna check that out, it's linked in the card above and the description down below. You can use a different form builder. Any form builder that allows short codes will work for this. So use the one you're most comfortable with. I'm gonna use contact form seven. I'm gonna install it before installing plugins on a live site, make sure you back it up first. If you need help with that, there's a link in the description down below to help you back up your site and it shows you how to restore your site if something goes wrong. It's pretty rare something goes wrong these days, but you just never know. It's best to have a backup. So once you're ready, install the plugin and then activate it. And then let's add another one, pop-up maker. There's a couple different pop-up makers as well. This is the most featured one in the free version, in my opinion. So that's why I use this. There's others that have free versions as well. You just can't do as much in the free version from what I've found. And this one works really well. So we're going to use that. We've got these two plugins installed. Now we're first going to make a contact form. It's actually one made already. When you install contact form seven, it makes a contact form for you. If we edit it, we see here we have a label, your name, and this is a field inside the square brackets is a field in the form. And so it's your name field your email field, a subject field, and a message field, just like a regular contact form. There's all kinds of extra stuff you can add in. Refer to the playlist I mentioned earlier, links in the description down below if you wanna add more to your contact form. We're just gonna stick with this basic form right here. And if you look up here, you see a short code. And if you go to your contact forms list, you see the short code here as well. I'm just gonna copy this into my clipboard. This is what we're gonna to use to make the contact form in the pop-up. So let's go to pop-up maker. Here we have a bunch of examples. It's all the same one actually, just keeps reinstalling when I uninstall and reinstall the plugin. I've done a couple of tutorials on this specific plugin, so that's why that's happening. You should probably only have one example auto opening announcement pop-up. You can trash all these if you want, or you can see how they work and adapt them for your needs. I'm just going to trash them all. Then I'll go over the trash. This will auto delete within 30 days or you can select it all, delete permanently, apply, and now they're gone immediately. To make a new pop-up, click on create new pop-up. Let's give it a name, contact form pop-up. Only the admins of your site will see this name. The pop-up title will be seen by forward-facing people, so the visitors of your site. Drop us a line, and this is the content of the pop-up. We're gonna paste in our form code. Down here, we have pop-up settings, Triggers are important. Add a new trigger. Click to open, time delay to auto open, or form submission. Click to open is the one we're gonna use in this video. I've got a different video about making pop-ups where I show time delay. I'll link to that in carp above in the description down below as well if you, want, if you want to check that out. But click to open makes the most sense to me because I'm gonna have a button on the contact page for this video. When someone clicks on it, it's gonna open the pop-up with the contact information, or sorry, the contact form. Time delay also works. You can have the time delay and then set a condition of having it only appear in your contact page. That makes sense. Form submission would not make sense in this case because this is what triggers the pop-up. So you'd have to submit a form before the pop-up is shown, but it's a contact form and it doesn't make sense. It's a circular logic. I'm gonna choose, choose click to open. I'm going to prevent pop-up from showing it to a visitor again using a cookie. I'm gonna uncheck that because what happens is when they open it and they close it, they would be cookied, then it wouldn't open again. But somebody might go to your contact page, they might click to open it to contact you, and they say, oh wait, I forgot what exactly I was gonna ask, or it's about a product, I forgot the product name, I'm just gonna go back to the product listing, and then they go back to the contact page and they can't open it again. 
so we don't want to use the cookie in this case. The other video that I just mentioned does show you the cookie method. So if you want to see that, check out that tutorial. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. On this screen it says, this class needs to be added to whatever thing you want someone to click for the pop-up to be triggered. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. You can also add other CSS classes here. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. If you do, then you can fill them in here and choose other stuff to add it to. This will make more sense in just a minute. Click on add. So we've added our trigger now. For targeting, we don't have to change anything. This will allow you to target specific pages, specific categories, things like that. But in this tutorial, we're going to have the pop-up open just on the contact page. And so we don't have to set any conditions because it's going to be at the click of a button and that button's only going to exist on the contact page. Display, we can mess around with that. First, we're going to add the pop-up to the page so we can see how it looks and then we'll change the display. Close options and advanced options. We'll take a look at those in a minute as well. I'm going to click on publish. Now we're going to create the contact page and we're going to add the pop-up to it so we can see how it actually works so far. Let's go to pages. I don't think I have a contact page yet do have a contact page, let's edit that. There's no contact yet, so that's great. This would be where you would add a map and office hours and things like that. They might have a little button that says, click here to contact us. So let's pretend we have the map and the hours and everything like that. I'm just gonna add the button that says, click here to contact us. I'm gonna make the color, the background color a little more contrasting. Make it black. That contrasts pretty well. And then under advanced, we have additional CSS classes at the bottom. This is where you want to paste in that special CSS class that the pop up gave us or the pop up plugin gave us. It's going to paste that in there. This should add the period. CSS class is denoted by a period first, IDs with a hashtag. It should add the period automatically, or it should add this class, sorry, to the button, and the period won't be needed in this little field here. Let's update that. Let's view the page. And there's a button over there. It's on the left side of the screen, as you can see, but that's just due to my theme and the theme settings. Whatever theme you're using or page builder you're using, just align the button to where you want it. Now, since it has the special class, let's inspect it to make sure. There it is. Pop make 88 it's a special class. Now, if we click on that button, the pop-up should pop up. See if it works. And there it is. There's our pop-up. And this is how it looks out of the box. We can change the design and pretty much everything else inside of the pop-up maker down here under display. We can change all kinds of stuff. So the first thing I want to change is, well, I quite like how it looks, first of all. It doesn't look so bad. It's a lot of extra space. So I want to change the size first. Let's go to the size tab. Let's change it to auto. And hopefully that will just adjust to the size of the form itself. There's a lot of different options as you can see. Under appearance, I'm going to keep the default theme because I like it, but there's lots of options. And in fact, you can create your own theme. You can customize this theme. You can also create your own. If you go to pop up themes on the left, let's open that. We see all the themes that are listed as options right here are also listed over here for the themes. You can go in and edit any one of these. You can also create a new pop-up theme. To edit these, just go in to edit. You can change, you can see on the right-hand side how it looks. You can change the overlay color, the opacity, the container, the background, the borders, the drop shadow, the font, the text shadow, the content, the clothes, the size, the background, the font, the border, the drop shadow, the text shadow, lots of options. And keep in mind, this is just the free version of the plugin, which is pretty skookum. So I'm gonna keep the theme that we have, the default theme, and change the size. Under animation, we can choose how it appears. I'm gonna choose fade and slide. You can have a sound play when the pop-up opens. I prefer not to do that, but you can if you want. You can change the position. Under advanced, you have all these options. This is where you'll want to be changing settings if you're having problems with your pop-up, as it's as in it's not displaying properly, or it pops up behind something. So you change the Z index. This Z index is 
a very large number, and it's likely nothing else will have a higher Z index, and so that's why they have that such a large number. So it always appears on the top. And under close, we have the close button, form submission, alternate methods of closing. Under advanced, we have retriggering after non-AJAX form submission, AJAX being without a page refresh, and non-AJAX being when there is a page refresh. So it retriggers the pop-up if there's a page refresh, which would normally close the pop-up. So you can turn that on if you want the pop-up re-triggered. You can disable accessibility features, although you should probably keep those on. And when you set everything up how you want it, go to update, come back out here and refresh. We did not turn the setting on where it re-triggers the pop-up. And now our pop-up size is just right and I think it looks pretty nice, with, just with the default settings. And the form itself, this can be edited inside the contact form seven editor. So all we added to the pop-up, if you recall, is just the short code. So if you want to edit the form and the form's appearance and the way things are laid out and the fields you have, you go to your contact forms, you edit the one that's in the pop-up, and this is where you make changes to your actual form. And again, I've got a whole slew of tutorials in a contact form seven playlist if you want to check those out. It's a link to in the description down below. And this video is part of the WordPress skills playlist on my channel. That playlist is all about getting up to speed with WordPress if you're new to WordPress. There's a link to that playlist right up here in that card. Click there to watch the whole playlist or click down here to watch a video that shows you how to create jump links and add them to your menu systems. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.